everybody, I'm Bill Sanders, and this is Watch Art Sci, the art and science of watch collection. Uh, today, what we're going to do is that we're going to be taking a look at the works of Gerald Gento. Uh, but first, before we get started on that, uh, we want to look at our Watch of the Week. The Watch of the Week this week is uh, belongs to James Wong. It is, it's a Gerard Perigo 1966. Uh, it's the uh, case material is pink gold. This is to me a, just it's a magnificent watch. It's uh, 41 millimeters, good size uh, uh, watch, and it has that what I call a Calatrava look, uh, the Veseron Constantine uh, patrimony work or look. It's a gorgeous watch. It's a gorgeous watch. Uh, I don't want to tell you what uh, James paid for it, but I'll tell you this: he got a he got a very good buy on it. Just and it and it's really a, just a almost the perfect dress watch as far as I'm concerned. So anyhow, uh, James, congratulations on a really really beautiful watch. And um, you know, if you're looking for a really good buy on an on an honest watch. Uh, I can really highly recommend the uh, Girard Perigo 1966. Okay, uh, now we're going to take a look at uh, Gerald uh, Genta. Uh, he uh, died in uh, 2011, about six years ago. But <laughs> his influence was so huge. In, in watch design, but also in other things about watches. Uh, I thought, well, this guy is, uh, we need to take a look at him. We need to take a look at his designs and also his watches. He had his own watch company. He did all, all of these uh, things. Uh, first of all, the probably the most famous watch that he designed is the Royal Oak. Now, uh, Genta was working for Audemars Piguet and the, <laughs> His boss came up and said, "Hey, we decided we're gonna uh, we need a sports watch and we want it waterproof." Well, uh, Gentis, <laughs> we need it tomorrow, or I think maybe it was on Friday. We need it by Monday, something like that. He didn't have a lot of time, so uh, what he had in mind, what he called a scap hander, which is the helmet for a, a diving helmet. And that was where the waterproofness idea came from. I mean, well, he came, he, he got the, to, to, to waterproof it. And so he sort of connected the waterproofer with the scap hander. And uh, what he came up with was a Royal Oak, which is, I mean, if it weren't for the Royal Oak, I don't think there'd be an Audemars Piguet, certainly not an independent one. So this was, uh, this was his, probably his most famous design. Now, when, Audemars Piguet uh, came out with their sports watch. Uh, Patek Philippe thought, well, we, we better do one too. And they came out with a Nautilus. And of course, Vassaro and Constantine uh, did as well. But uh, despite whatever, not everyone, but a lot of people believe uh, Genta did not design uh, the uh, Vassaro and Constantine overseas. Okay, so let's see what else he designed, which is, 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 is considerable. I mean, not just a little, but a whole lot. Uh, the IWC Engineer. This uh, watch is a, again, you talk about an iconic watch. I think uh, next to the Portuguese, this is probably the most iconic of uh, IWC watches. Uh, another one, the Omega Constellation. I think one of the reviews, collection reviews, we had one of the uh, collectors had one of these. It's a, it's just a gorgeous watch. This is another one that um, Genta designed. And the the last one I want to take a look at was the Bulgari Bulgari. This is a, I think it began as originally it was um, a quartz. Uh, he d just did the case design and the dial design. But the uh, but later on uh, it was redesigned with uh, movements, and one of the things I'm still not sure exactly uh, whether the movement, the mechanical movement at one time or another, was a gentle one. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to that a little later. Okay, so uh, now uh, let's take a look at the watches that were 
uh, Gerald Genta watches. Uh, the first one I want to take a look at is the Arena by Retro. Now, when I saw this, the thing I was, <laughs> first thing that came to mind was my own <laughs> uh, Harry Winston uh, by Retro, by Retrograde. And uh, not only is it by Retrograde, but it also has jumping hours. And the hours come up right up in the middle. I don't know if you can see it there where the 12 is. And then the rest of the time is the dial points to... Uh, again, using a, a retrograde, it goes from about the 9 o'clock over to, to the 3 o'clock uh, for the hours. And uh, the date is below another retrograde. So uh, there were two retrogrades. And the, the thing that was, was interesting, just like my Harry Winston, uh, it used a, uh, it was uh, Gerald Gentz's caliber 7723, was based on a Girard Perigo 3100. Okay, uh, I'm, that wasn't enough. All right, he came up with a Octo Chrono Quattro Retro. What was the name of it? And there were four retrogrades on this watch, and uh, there were the same ones on the bi retrograde, uh, plus a uh, one on the left and right side. Uh, this was uh, one of the finalists and uh, one of the uh, Grand Prix. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Joe Genta himself never won, or at least his brand never won a, uh, uh, a Grand Prize. Anyway, uh, but this was uh, this is a very interesting looking watch, and uh, is, if you like retrogrades, which I do, uh, this is a this is really a, a honey of a watch. Now, the movement here, uh, what he had, he, it was based, he had a base of a Frederick uh, Pigot caliber 1185. And on top of that, he put the jumping hour and then the quadruple re retrograde functions. So they are on the other side of the, uh, of, the, uh, of the movement. You can't see them from here. And I didn't, I, I wasn't able to get a, uh, uh, an image of the, uh, the module that uh, he made for that. But this is a, uh, uh, the 7800 was one of the, uh, one of his own movements. Now, he also, uh, these are just, this is a very small sample of what Genta, uh, Genta did. Uh, and this is a, a Chrono Sport. Now, I sort of had one eye open for a Chrono Sport. And I saw this one, and I liked it. I thought, no, okay, now this I'll get a chrono sport and people would get off my back about having one. Uh, and well, I, I, I really do like it. And I, I wanted a, um, a movement by Genta, or at least something with a, you know, a decent base, such as Gerard Pergot or the Frederick Piguet. It doesn't, unfortunately, or, and again, I know not that unfortunate, but it has uh, a value 7750 in it. And the, the, the whole sort of saga of, of Gerald Genta is he's, I think he was, he was more of a designer and a watchmaker than he was a businessman because it seemed like he'd have his company for a while and sell it. And then he came up with another one. Uh, it wasn't called uh, Gerald Gerald Genta, but he had another name for it, and he had that for a while and sold it. Uh, and most of the time, he he simply uh, designed watches. Uh, he early on, uh, when he first started designing watches, back in the, I think it was in the 1950s, uh, he was getting 15 uh, Swiss francs per design. I mean, he, he's got these million dollar designs that he does. And he's uh, but when starting off, he he and and he designed so many watches. One of the things I think he designed the Rolex uh, Cellini, uh, which is a Rolex I really like. I know it's not very popular, but that doesn't matter. I, <laughs> a lot of stuff I like is not very popular. Uh, but this guy was an incredible uh, designer. He quit watchmaking for a while and watches. I mean, and painted. He loved to paint. He saw himself, I think, more of a of an artist that was doing a lot of the uh, watch design and the uh, uh, movement design uh, to support his his love of uh, doing things with art. 
Okay, now I I I was there were these are some movements that I couldn't find the base to. The GG1000, the GG1004, the GG7044, 7510, and 7502. And I thought, well, you know, this might be fun to have, you know, if, if you guys would like to get involved in it and try to dig it up, uh, it'll give you some idea. I got three, and one was a Val Jew, and it, and it wasn't a GG uh, caliber. But all of these other ones are, and I couldn't find them. And uh, I, I don't know whether they're mechanical or not. I'm assuming they are. Um, and if they're not, well, they don't count. <laughs> so what I thought we'd do is uh, the we have our watch giveaway for collectors. And so I thought, well, what I can do is that the I'll, if, you, if you're the first one to identify the base of any one of these or all of them, with a reference to the source of where you found that information. I mean, there's sometimes somebody having a food fight in one of the forums and somebody says, well, it must be this. It, it, it's a good source for it. Now, I've been working on it. And uh, if you just put, you know, and if, if you find it and say, hey, this thing is a uh, Gerard Perigo something, 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 or this is a uh, Frederick Piguet something, 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 or this is a, in fact, one of the things I found was there was a, um, uh, an El Primero, a Zenith El Primero, one of the Bulgaris. And that's important because Bulgari bought Gentis at one point. And so there are a lot of things that Bulgari has that are actually Genta. It gets very confused and very interesting. And um, so, anyway, so this is the, uh, uh, there is the deal right there. And if you're, if you're interested, um, you know, hey, you know, it might be sort of fun. Put the answer in the um, in the comments, and the first one does it. I'll just put their name into the uh, the hopper with the other people. Now, this is for people who have turned in collections. In fact, even people who've won, they can enter it too, and I'll put their name back in <laughs> back in the hopper. So this will give you a chance for multiple chances on winning a free watch. Okay, uh, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Uh, in addition to any kind of involvement, uh, I think that uh, Genta's brand and his watches, I think these are some hidden gems because you can get some very good watches at some decent prices. Uh, in fact, there was this one I thought, well, hey, this is too good to be true. And I contacted the guy selling it and it was already gone. So, <laughs> you know, that happens a lot. Uh, anyhow, uh, so here's some uh, is a watch uh, that you may take a look at. A again, I resell values on these. I have no idea. Uh, I they they don't seem to be great because the initial prices of these things were were pretty hefty. They were between fifteen and twenty thousand dollars at least, and then they went up from there. When you start adding a lot of precious metals, they get, they go up really quickly. Okay, well. Uh, uh, this is also an invitation to subscribe if you like, and uh, let's hear from you. Let's hear what you think, and and I'd love to hear from you if you have any experience with uh, uh, Gerald Genta uh, watches. Bill Sanders for Watch Art Side, the art and science of watch collection. Hope to see you Sunday.